The House on Mango Street is about a young woman's search for a house of her own, and by that I meant uh, the character was looking for another way to be, otro modo de ser. I'm quoting from Rosario Castellano, the Mexican feminist and novelist. Uh, but people also take that she was looking for a real physical home. Uh, and yes, that's true, but only in so far as it could create a space for her to reinvent herself, another way to be other than what you inherit from our culture that is very male-dominated. Um, in my own life, I was not aware when I was writing Esperanza's story that I was also going to be writing some parts of my life in the future. So subsequently, people blur the book for my own life. In relation to House on Mango Street, people always ask, you know, are you Esperanza? Did this happen to you? And I'm not Esperanza. I'm the sum of all the stories that have passed through me, that I've heard, that I've witnessed. And Esperanza becomes a composite of all of the above. So sometimes people presume that what happened to Esperanza happened to me. Not necessarily. Uh, but certainly some things that happened, uh, anything that passed through my heart, is what I can write about. Uh, so if something happened to you, if something happened to my students, uh, my mother, uh, if something happened to myself, uh, I take all of those pieces and I put them into Esperanza. So some fibers of those stories are mine. There is no Mango Street in Chicago. There is a Mango Avenue. Uh, I didn't know that a Mango Avenue existed when I wrote House on Mango Street. Uh, the house on Wanga Street is based on a real house in a real neighborhood, Humble Park, at a real address. But I picked up experiences and stories from other neighborhoods I lived in, other places I teach at, other communities I visited and manipulated them and put them in this invented neighborhood called the house on Mango Street. Uh, in real life, the house was not on Mango Avenue or Mango Street. It was on Campbell Street. But I couldn't call it the house on Campbell Street because everybody would think of the soup, right? And at that time, I wasn't a very good uh, storyteller. So I thought, well, what sounds like mm, Campbell but has nothing to do with Campbell? And I just would say it. And as I was a poet, I would say it until a word that had more or less those vowel sounds so I could trick myself. However, when I moved into this neighborhood, the, the house on Campbell Street, it was not like the house on Mongo Street. When I moved away from the house on Campbell Street, it looked like the neighborhood of the house on Mango Street. So you, as an artist, manipulate time. You move things around. You cut and shape the way a gardener would shape a garden so that you can see certain flowers and pay attention to certain plants. Otherwise, it's just a jungle. And it's the writer's job to cut away and prune and shape and make order from that jungle so that you can pay attention and see certain colors and patterns. And that's what I did with the real House on Mango Street from my memory and the invented House on Mango Street in my fiction. What attracts people to the House on Mango Street, I think, and I'm only going to guess because I'm not them, but I think that it speaks to young people's isolation, loneliness, and uh, longing. I think adolescence is a period of great solitude and a, a period when you don't know where you're going to go, what choices you want to make, and you don't really have the menu in front of you. Nobody kind of gives you a menu of what possibilities are there. You basically have to invent it as you go, and you don't know who you're going to become yet. So you're looking around for models as Esperanza is. She's looking at other women around her saying, I don't want to go that way. I'm not going that way. But where do I go and where do I fit in? And, and how, do, how do I make myself into the person I want to be if I don't see that person I want to be? I think that that's true for young people of any culture in their teens when one day they still feel like a kid and the next day you know you've got the responsibilities of the adult. So I think that House on Mango Street speaks to people who are living in that uh, amphibious zone 
of childhood and adulthood and feeling very frightened being there and very lonely. Uh, and I think that's why it speaks to young people.